Suki Kim, without you, there is no us, my time with the sons of North Korea's elite. Prepare to dive deep into the enthralling yet unnerving world of author Suki Kim as she uncovers the lives of North Korea's elite, in her captivating book, Without You, There Is No Us. This book summary will take you on an eye-opening journey through Suki Kim's undercover investigation, where she disguises herself as a volunteer English teacher within a group of missionaries. Experience the restrictions, fears, and sacrifices the people of North Korea face, both foreigners and citizens alike. As you read about constant surveillance, government minders, and the cruel treatment of those who step out of line. Get ready to explore the complex notions of what life is truly like in a land where freedoms are few and far between. Getting into North Korea Suki Kim's memoir Without You, There Is No Us sheds light on the difficulties of entering North Korea. With less than 2,000 Westerners granted access to the country per year, the visa process can be grueling and time-consuming. To obtain a visa, visitors must go through a North Korean embassy or consulate, which is not easily accessible for citizens of many countries. The approval process involves 35 North Korean government agencies, resulting in a visa that is typically issued just before the start of the trip. Kim was able to enter the country by posing as a volunteer English teacher with a missionary group, as North Korean authorities do not allow Western journalists into the country. Once inside, the challenges continue. By experiencing North Korea's oppressive regime firsthand, Kim's memoir offers a unique perspective into the secret and largely inaccessible country. North Korea's Watchful Eye In North Korea, paranoia is a reality. Every move a person makes is being watched. Minders are assigned to keep track of foreigners by meeting them at the airport, taking their passports and phones. Even citizens live under similar surveillance, with a vast network of informants monitoring and reporting on each other. At the university, there is always a monitor during lessons, and some students secretly serve as vice monitors and secretaries to report on their teachers and classmates. The fear of being reported on is so intense that people rarely let their guard down, often avoiding any mention of their personal preferences. This state of constant monitoring creates an atmosphere of fear and mistrust, where everyone is suspicious of each other. Living under surveillance in North Korea Discover the consequences of living under strict surveillance and how even the smallest actions in North Korea can land you in trouble. Living under constant surveillance can be a nightmare, but in North Korea, it's a way of life. The minders and informants in the country are not only there to protect citizens, but they are also on the lookout for any actions that could be classified as crimes. For instance, handling images of the great leader carelessly is considered a crime that could land you in prison. In North Korea, photographs are considered an extension of the people, and therefore, damaging their leader's image is deemed disrespectful. As a foreigner in the country, you are not exempt from these strict rules. Taking pictures is a serious crime, especially if you capture images of the military or photos that depict the country's problems. Minders are always watching, and they can report you at any time for any perceived wrongdoing. Not even simple activities like jogging while off-duty or wearing clothes that don't align with Korea's modesty standards are allowed. Kim's experience at PUST demonstrates how strict the country's rules are. She had to ensure that she gave equal chocolate bars to all students and faced consequences when her minder caught her jogging on campus. Even her clothing had to be carefully picked, with long skirts and high-necked blouses only being acceptable in muted colors. Living under surveillance in North Korea is more than just a physical imprisonment, it's the constant battle to exist without being noticed. Restricted Freedom in North Korea North Koreans and foreigners in North Korea live under severe restrictions that limit their ability to move and explore locations without permission. North Korea's residents and foreign visitors face strict restrictions on their freedom of movement. Residents of Pyongyang must obtain permission even to visit a nearby bowling alley or swimming pool, and university students are prohibited from visiting their families, even if they are close by and accessible by car. 
Even tourists are confined to official tours with predetermined itineraries and must pay for a guide, driver, and minder if they want to visit a restaurant. Similarly, visitors from foreign countries must obtain permission before they can travel anywhere, including eating or buying something from their local shops. The rules are so severe that only a few privileged young men in the author's class were allowed to visit the ancient capital of Kaesung. The article highlights that North Korea's residents are not allowed to explore the country without permission. They are not allowed to make personal trips or walks to relax, and the only way to move around the city is through the assistance of a minder. Pyongyang also follows an unofficial curfew, as noticed by the author's experience, where the minders become very nervous when traveling around at night. Overall, the article conveys that North Koreans and foreigners in North Korea live under severe restrictions that limit their ability to move and explore locations without permission. The Dark Reality of North Korea North Korea is infamous for its human rights offenses and censorship. The country has a history of abusing its citizens, with over one million executions, concentration camp fatalities or forced labor since 1948. Political prisoners are believed to be kept in gulags, with escape leading to certain death. Censorship is severe, with state-controlled media as the sole source of information. Those caught watching foreign channels may be punished through forced labor, prison, or even the death penalty. Internet access is limited to a censored intranet of state-sponsored websites, and foreigners are discouraged from speaking with DPRK journalists. The education system is strictly monitored to ensure that no negative information is presented to students. The reality of life in North Korea is a grim one, with limited access to information, personal freedoms, and human rights. North Korea's Education System North Korean universities closed in 2008 to make students work. The students were recruited for immense construction work to mark the anniversary of former great leader Kim Il-sung's birth. Most North Koreans are required to do gardening work, guard duty at Kim Il-sungism study halls, and serve in the military. University students have to tend to the campus and do farm work. Most young men have to serve for 10 years, and women 7. Only a small number of elite people are exempt from military service. Life in North Korea North Korea suffers from extensive shortages of food, energy, and medical supplies. A large percentage of its population is undernourished, and a terrible famine called the Arduous March claimed millions of lives. The government only provides food stamps to citizens based on their loyalty to the ruling party. Electricity is unreliable, and gas is scarce, impacting everything from grass cutting to heating. Healthcare is dangerously undersupplied, and even major surgeries and amputations are performed without anesthetics. Pyongyang is better supplied, but even hospitals there lack basic supplies like antibiotics and anesthetics. North Korea's Cult of Personality North Korea's unique form of worship is centered around the great leaders, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, and Kim Jong-un. The country is filled with religious images and symbols of the leaders, with over 35,000 statues of them. North Koreans also wear pins of the leaders, which are required. There are special sites called wonders associated with the great leaders' lives that are treated as places of pilgrimage. Even the calendar system is related to Kim Il-sung's life, starting from his birth. North Koreans tell stories of Kim Jong-il's incredible powers, such as being able to control the weather. Writing in North Korea Kim's experience teaching writing in North Korea sheds light on the limitations of education in the country. Kim, a teacher in North Korea, discovered the severe limitations of education in the country when she tasked her students with writing a job application letter. Her students had never heard of such a thing since jobs were assigned to them by the authorities, and they had no understanding of making themselves marketable for a prospective employer. Writing essays proved to be another challenge for Kim's students since the concept of exploring and proving ideas was foreign to them. Unlike essays in the outside world, North Korean essays did not have to hook readers, and newspaper articles used the same tone and structure from beginning to end. Even though Kim's students belonged to the upper tiers of North Korean society, 
most of them had never written a letter and did not know how to put down basic information such as an address. Kim's experience reflects the difficulties faced by North Koreans in accessing education that can enable them to write effectively and communicate beyond the confines of the state agenda. In the end, without you, There Is No Us offers a shocking and poignant look at life inside North Korea. With a focus on the lives of the children of North Korea's elite, Kim highlights the harsh realities and stifling control they face on a daily basis. The book summary demonstrated the lengths the North Korean government goes to preserve absolute obedience among its people. As we've seen, the state practices covert surveillance on foreigners and its own citizens alike, enforces rigid rules on everything from clothing to behavior, suppresses dissent through brutal methods, and denies basic necessities such as adequate health care, anesthetics, and even the freedom to express one's personal opinions. This harrowing account serves as an important reminder of the power and control North Korea's regime holds over its people, and how far we still have to go in the fight for human rights.